So welcome uh, to Sarasota Audubon Extra, The Power of eBird with Katherine Young. Um, I'm Karen Willie. I'm your Zoom moderator. I'll just give you a few housekeeping details. Um, at any time during the webinar, you'll have the opportunity to submit your questions for Catherine in the, in the Q&A. So we ask you to put your questions in the Q&A. Um, and you can use the chat for logistics, but we prefer Q&A for the actual questions for Catherine because it's easier for us afterwards for Margie to keep track of what's been asked and answered. So, um, but either way, we'll get to you. Um, so the questions will be answered at the end, but you're welcome to submit one Maybe. at any time. Maybe. You'll do it. <laughs> okay. Um, and that's about it. So um, I will turn it over to Margie. Oh, first to Jean to welcome you all. Hi, this is Jean Doobie, Sarasota Audubon president. A quick hello. Thank you for joining. It's wonderful that you've, um, that you've zoomed in on us today. We have a wonderful program with Catherine, lots to learn and lots to know about. So I'm going to sign off and uh, thank you for joining. Thanks, Jean. She's gonna come back as a participant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and Marty, we're ready for you. All righty. Well, I am thrilled to introduce Catherine Young, one of our very own at Sarasota Audubon. Catherine received her BS degree in education from the University of Wisconsin at Madison and began birding in 2005 when she moved to Florida with her husband from Minnesota. She's currently on the board of directors of the Sarasota Audubon Society, where she holds the positions of first vice president and education chair. She teaches birding and eBird classes at the celery fields for Sarasota Audubon she also coordinates and leads road scholar birding programs for Sarasota Audubon and provides presentations for various clubs in the area, the Sarasota and Manatee, area, uh, Manatee County areas. So take it away, Catherine. Okay, great. Um, so eBird, the power of eBird. Um, it's more than just submitting your checklists. It's all about taking all of these checklists and eBird threads them all together and finds out information about birds, the birds in the world, um, how they're migrating, where they're migrating. Are they still using the same um, migratory stopover sites on their way north and on their way south? Um, are these disappearing? Are they still um, breeding and nesting in the same areas? Science, scientists can use all of your checklists to find out all of these answers. So this is your chance to give back to science and conservation. And in Minnesota, I do know of a wild, um, a WMA, a wildlife management area that was created because of, um, they were able to prove their, the birds, threatened birds, endangered birds, whatever they were, were using this habitat. And so they went on eBird and found out exactly what was going on in that area. And this gave them a lot of ammunition to turn it into a, a WMA. Okay, so um, let's get started. So I have to do a share screen. This is my first time ever doing a Zoom. So I do share, then I'm going, what I'm gonna do is do a spotlight for my checklist. Okay, all right, let's see. Okay, am I here? Now I would it's like to good. get this. Yes, you're good, Catherine. How do I get this off? What? Oh, oh, oh I see it. Okay, I got it. Okay, so if you type, if you go into your web browser and put in, um, now how do I get rid of this? Okay, all right. Um, if you put in ebird.org, it's gonna bring up the ebird. Um, this is, I don't like this. Okay, get this out. <laughs> okay, that's good. 
it's going to bring up this um, screen, eBird. This is the home screen. If you uh, now all that little annotates not with me. Okay. Can you see my cursor here? Yes. It, no, it was there and now it's not. Try try again under view options. I could see it. I can see it. It's there. Yeah, but she had a red dot. Oh. Did you click on annotate? Okay, there it is. Okay. Oh, there's the pencil. You got the pencil. That's okay. That works too. Spotlight. All right. Yep. No. <laughs> All right, well, here's the pencil. Okay, this is the home screen eBird. And we're gonna go through submit, explore, my area eBird. And at the end, we'll do science. Now, everything I learned, I learned, I just went through the help menu. I started entering checklists in probably 2014. And for the first probably five, six, seven years, I just did submitting. I really didn't um, understand all this other um, menus. So it's been great just really studying this. Okay, so the first screen, I love this first screen because it shows you a photo that someone took. This one is a black headed gull and it was taken by this person down here. You can see my cursor in the Macaulay Library. Every time you take a photo and put it on your checklist, it's gonna go in the Macaulay Library. So if I click on that, um, having problems. <laughs> um, okay. It won't. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now. Oh. Oh, here. Okay. No, it didn't bring it up. Hmm. Oh, here it is. Okay. So then it brings up the photo. And I just love this because what it does is over here on the left side of the screen, it shows you the person that took it, where they took it. It was in Switzerland. So it gives you that little green um, button right there. And then over here, it gives you all the um, data from the camera. So if you're a photographer, this is great. It tells you the f-stop, the ISO, um, et cetera. So I love that. And I love looking at these photos. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main menu. And now I'm gonna go into explore. Okay, so now here's, let me get this out of here. Okay, now under explore, here's where I am. You, it says enter a region and th throughout eBird, you're gonna see this word region. And what it means just means is you need to enter a county, if you look up here, a state, a province or a country or a territory. If you enter a city like Minneapolis, it's gonna say no matches. It's not for cities. Okay, so I'm gonna say Sarasota, even though Sarasota is a city, it's the county it's looking at right here. So I'm gonna do that. And then it's going to bring up Sarasota. So you look up here and it's Sarasota. And in Sarasota, we have 354 species of birds that have been observed through eBird, 86,000 completed checklists. eBirders are 6,000, over 6,000. And we have 171 um, hotspots. Hotspots are um, places where a lot of people bird. Okay, then we're going to go down here in the sightings. It brings up all the sightings for Sarasota, which is up here, and it brings up the last scene. So rock pigeon was the last bird seen on March 23rd. Now, when it's in blue, that means it's gonna, you can go to another screen. This blue for rock pigeon will just bring up a rock pigeon so I can look at it. And it will allow me to go over here and look at the females, juveniles, and it tells a little bit about it. And you can even listen to the audio there. Okay, let's go back now. Okay. And the blue here allows me to go to this person's checklist. This is their profile and I'll be showing you that too. So the first thing usually what I do in the morning with my cup of coffee, I just bring up Sarasota and I look and see what birds have been seeing. I just kind of look through here and then you can see, oh, a piping plover. So 
Kylie got that at North Lido Beach. If I click on North Lido Beach, that is one of the hot spots, and it will show you all the birds of sightings in that hot spot. Now, if it's in, in black lettering, that's a personal um, birding area. So all of these in black are personal. If the name is in black, that means they don't have a profile that they didn't um, create for themselves. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here to this side. And then it, what, um, if you put in photos, eBird puts in the last seven days of photos. They're nice to look at. Recent visits are right here. And now a lot of people like to go to more recent visits because it brings up the sightings for Sarasota County in just a little bit different order. So you can see it brings up the person that birded. Their checklist is always the, in um, the date and then where they birded. Now they're all in dark here, black. Okay, so I just, you can just kind of look down here. Maybe you're, you don't know where you want a bird tomorrow and you're kind of looking to see who's got a lot of um, species. This person has 43. Okay, that's John, he's, he's a really good birder here. Then you can look at his checklist and say, well, maybe I wanna go to Mayaka where John went. Here's the Mayaka, his, this is John's checklist at Mayaka River State Park right here for this day at this time right here. Um, this would take me to his profile. This gives you a little bit of idea of how long he birded, um, if he was birding with anyone and how many miles he went. And these are his species. And usually John has a lot of photos, but he doesn't have any on there. So I'm gonna go back. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm gonna do is we're over here and I've showed you the media over here. And then it, what it does is it does top eBirders. So it kind of puts people, it does this automatically. So if you start entering checklists, can you, can you see this? There it is. You start putting in checklists, it automatically ranks you. It, it motivates people. There's a lot of motivational tools in, check, in eBird. So if you get 207, and 80 um, species in Sarasota County, you're gonna be in num at number nine, right behind Margie there. So now let's go down to the top hotspots. If you look here, Mayaka River State Park is our top hotspot. 256 species have been recorded there. Celery Fields is next and Siesta Key Public Beach. Then it just lists all the rest of them here. And then you can do more and you can go all the way up to 171. So let's go in to Siesta Key Public Beach. Now, what it's doing, you think it's taking to, uh, oh, it, it's not working because it's taking a while, but it's loading all of those species. Now you look up here again, same thing as when you saw Sarasota. Now it says Siesta Key Public Beach, okay? There is a map for it, it's over here, right there. I could go to the map, I could get directions. And again, I'm gonna look at the last birds that were sighted there by this person. Now at this time of year, we have a lot of people that are coming down um, visiting. Um, so there's a lot of people I don't know who they are, but we can go in and look at their profile, see where they're from. The other thing I love about this for Siesta Key Beach is the printable checklist. So all you do is click on that and it automatically gives you a checklist of that hotspot. I could have done that when I had Sarasota up there and then I would have had a checklist for all of Sarasota. So I'm gonna go back out. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna go down to, okay, we have, this is what I'm gonna show you next, illustrated checklist and bar charts for Siesta Key. So I'm gonna do um, illustrated checklist. Now this takes a little while because it's loading every, all of these species, the photos that are associated with them, the last person to see these um, species, et cetera. So <clears throat> here it comes. Okay, this is the illustrated checklist for Siesta Key Public Beach 222 species have been observed here. 
158 species with photos, audio, and then you can kind of see what they are. Some photos are attached. John took that one. You can see there's not many Muscovy ducks down at um, Siesta Key. And look at this, blue-winged teal, they're not here in the summer. So th that bar chart tells you that, and I love that about it. But look at this. I don't know if you know this, Margie. You type in, let's say I want to know, there was an Iceland gull down there in Siesta Key, and I want to know when the last time that was um, sighted. Okay, so it brings it up the Iceland gull right here. We hardly ever get it. This was a rarity for us. And look at here, the last time it was seen was March 1st on 2021 by Gloria. Pretty cool. And then you can go to Gloria's checklist because it's a date. It's usually always a checklist if it's a date. You go in there to her checklist. And when Gloria submitted this, which we're gonna do next, this is submit right here. She put in a really nice um, comment area. She said, looking for the gull trifecta, happy to get the daily double, no California gull. Glaucus was found here very early. Didn't see the Iceland until after the Glaucus flew. Pictures show comparative size with nearby herring gulls. Glaucus is smaller, okay? So she did a really good job with that. And here's her, her pictures of the Iceland gull. And then she got a lesser black back and then she got a, uh, a Glaucus gull. And this is what she wrote for comments. It was an ongoing gull. Okay, we're gonna go back. <clears throat> Sometimes it does take a little bit of time. Oh, and this right here is a location key. Okay, here is, here's the main, Okay, I'm trying to get up there. There we go. That's the illustrated checklist. Okay, so now I'm going to go out of there and I'm going to go down to bar charts. Bar charts, you know, I never used to use bar charts or anything, but they are great because if you're like, let's say you're going to California or something, you can bring up a bar chart from a hotspot like I'm doing and you can say, oh, blue winged teals aren't here. Uh, the none of the ducks look at all the ducks they are not here in the summer because these are the months right here these birds are here um let me go down here to okay this is kind of interesting oh the white rump sandpiper no where was it the pectoral i thought this was really interesting because look at it really just comes through starting in august those sandpipers leave the arctic and they are down here mostly in the fall. We don't really get them in the spring. So, I mean, you can find out a lot from these bar charts. Wilson's phalarope was another kind of rarity when it came in. Bonaparte's gull, they're not here in the summer. You find out which gulls are here. Their laughing gulls are year round. Um, Ringbills really don't come here much in the summer, but I guess there are occurrences of them. This year we had the California. Etc. Okay, so that's done. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the main menu. And it's got another picture. These are um, constantly changing. Okay, so let's say we're going to travel. Um, and I want to kind of study for I'm going to go to a, a country like two years ago, I went to Colombia. And I, ha I didn't really know the birds, so I wanted to study the birds. So what you can do is go into explore and I'm gonna type in the word Columbia. And there it is right there. That's the um, country. And it's gonna bring up all the sightings, again, just like we had before, last seen the date in Columbia right up here. You can look and see where you are. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here to hotspots. And I know we are gonna to go to Rio Blanco, which is right here, number eight. So why not look at Rio Blanco's? Um, okay, it's gonna take a while to load because look at how many they have for that hotspot, 491. Um, it's gonna take a while to load here. 
And here it is. Okay, so here I am. I'm in Rio Blanco. And these are the sightings. Now, what I did to study, because, you know, sometimes you look at those books and you fall asleep. So I just click on the first duck that was seen. Now here it says January 30th. That's because of the pandemic. Usually there's people that have been birding there yesterday. So I'm going to just go torrent duck. And it brings up a picture of the torrent duck. The first one on the list. It brings up the female, the juvenile over here. And six more pictures I can look at. I'm looking at them. And then I go down here and I can read about it. And it says it's an amazing duck of fast flowing Andean rivers and streams, usually seen as singles or pairs resting on rocks in rushing water, not associating with other ducks, feeds in churning water and pools is an, and is somehow able to swim up the current with no apparent exertion. Okay, I really learned a lot about that duck, much more than I would have been when looking in a field guide. And look at this, I can listen to it. Mm -hmm. Voila. Then I can go to the next bird, right up here at the top. I just press to the right, Andy and Guan. And that's the next one. I could do sickle wing. I just keep going through it like a flashcard. Here's the guan, it tells about it. It's in the slopes and then you can listen to it. It's got a funny little call too. <laughs> anyway, you just, I think you really learn a lot from um, studying that way. Okay, so another thing you can do when you travel is you can do explore again. And let's say um, you heard about this really cool area that has a lot of owls and um, um, crossbills and hawks and you wanna go there and it's in Minnesota and you think it's called Sax Zim, okay, Minnesota. And you think, it, you think you heard, you remember those people saying Sax Zim was the hot spot or was the place where people were birding. So you bring up Minnesota, here's Minnesota. Here's all the sightings in Minnesota. Let's go over here. Let's go down to the hotspots and let's look for Sax Zim. Okay, I don't see it. So I'm gonna press more hotspots. And here we have Sax Zim right here. It has 230 species. I'm gonna click that. And then, oh, it was from the checklist, okay. Then I can do a print checklist right here. I'm right here, so I could print that checklist. And let's do um, the illustrated checklist. And it's gotta bring in 230 species. So I can kind of look and see on that. But what I really like to look at is the bar charts. So I'm gonna go down to bar charts because bar charts, it's more compact. It's just easier to look at this and see. Let's see, okay, well, I wanna see these. Um, okay, where are the, the grouse are here? It looks like they're here pretty much year round except um, August, September, and not here that much, sharp tail. Let's see, I'd kind of like to see some, oh, a goshawk, I'd love to see a goshawk. Winter, Those, that's the time to go there for that. Rough-legged hawks, winter again. Um, Sawit and boreal, I'd love to see those. Ah, only winter, looks like I'll be going to Minnesota in the winter. The I'd love to see an American three-toed woodpecker, winter, black-backed, hmm, iffy, but more in the winter. Now, the, the higher these bars are, the more the frequency. This one is lower barred, red-bellied. Well, they can come down here and see that. Okay, then... Oh, 
Um, oh, here's. Well, anyway, I was just going to show you the white wing, but <clears throat> that's okay. So then you can also um, click one of these and it will give you, let me see if I'm going to do that. Um, okay, I'm just going to go out now. All right, I'm going to go back to the main menu. Explore. One more thing with travel, two more things with travel. So let's say uh, the next thing that you're thinking of doing is you want to go to um, California and you want to know what birds in California you have not seen that are not on your life list. So I'm going to go down to target species and I'm going to enter California. Okay, California, United States, it's a region. And it's gonna be for your, okay, let's click this and see what they're saying. Is it for your United States list? Is it for your ABA list or your world list? It's gonna be for my ABA list, which is the American Birding Association list. And that is the United States, Canada, Hawaii, and a couple islands over by um, up in Northeast Canada. So I'm gonna say that. You can say year round or this month, or you can custom make it for maybe July if you want. I'm gonna show that target species, those target species. And it went in and looked at all my um, checklists and found out that I don't have 228 species observed in California that you need for your ABA life list of 575. That's my ABA list. And out of that many, I still need that many that you can find in California. So then you can go down here. If I click on this, it's gonna show me a picture of a golden crown. Oh, let's just move this over. I can get the, the frequency, the chances of getting it. I can get a map and a bar chart maybe that shows me when it's gonna be and where it's gonna be. I need all of these. Lawrence's goldfinch, etc. Okay, so that's, that I think is pretty cool. That was under the explore, explore up here. And I just scrolled down and I found target species. That's where that was. Um, the next, the last thing that I'm gonna tell you about traveling that would, that's fun is let's say I have a specific species that I want. I want a smooth build Ani in the US and I'm gonna enter it here, smooth build Ani. And I don't care, year round is fine. And I want it in Florida because that's where I mostly am in the winter. So it's gonna zero in on that. And you can go over here and say, show your points sooner. I'm over here, show my points sooner. And then I can just click to get it to come up. Now it's gonna come up with, with um, information that looks like this. Oops. <clears throat> Um, the red one that's right here, that is if, if the bird has been seen in the last 30 days and a lot of people have seen it, that's a hot spot. Um, the blue is if it's been seen um, 30 days plus, so like two months ago. So these could be all old checklists. They could be from um, 2018 or even 20, 2010. So I'm gonna click on this a couple more times. I wanna get right in there. And lo and behold, there's two red um, markers there. I'm gonna, I've done this before. So I know the one I want is behind there. Okay, what happened? Here it is. Then what it does, oh, okay. That was the first one, Port Mayaka. Or maybe I said that wrong. Um, I want this back one. Here it is. Ah, Okeechobee Ridge Trail. The last time they saw a smooth build Annie, Annie was 320. Okay, so not too long ago. 
This right here tells you the person that observed it. And these tell you where if the person has a photo of it and a, or a comment. So I could go down here to Robert's checklist because the date will get you the checklist. And there, um, Robert has a picture of the Ani. And he said, in, when he submitted this checklist, he wrote down the Winnie call then found in tree line on the northern side of the berm along the intercoastal waterway flying back and forth to trees along the paved road by the plowed fields. That was very helpful. So that's, that's all the picture he got. So I don't know if it's gonna be that easy of a bird to get. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to go over here and X this out. Okay, and now I can go up here. So I did that. So I'm gonna go back to the explore menu. Okay, so I did that through species map. You can play around with that. And then I did target species. And so now we are on submit right here. So we go to the submit menu and the first thing that comes up is choose from your locations. If when you first start, you probably won't have any locations. This one, I have a lot and they are in numeric and alphabetic order. So special characters are first. That's why these, one, these hotspots are first because they have a parentheses or a quote sign in front. Then all my numbers and then all my personal hotspots that have lettering. So once you get started, it's not gonna take you long to get all of those uh, locations. So the, what I usually do, you can just enter where you're, the region again, so that's county, state, country. Um, or you can do a G GPS, which I never do. Or down here, you can enter a city, county, state, or country. Now, mostly what you're going to do, use that for is historical, entering historical data. So like when I first started, I put in my historical data under country because I put in Costa Rica, Panama, because I didn't have, I had a range of dates for one checklist. So that's when you do that. And we're gonna go through that later. So let's do, find it on a map. So I'm gonna enter Sarasota, Florida. Let's see, okay. Now what it does is it brings this up. Submitting, okay, before we do this, submitting can be done um, from an app on your phone. Then if you do that, you, you're out in the field, it's going to track you and show where you went, and it's going to give the um, number of miles automatically, and then you'll just enter your checklist that way. Some people don't like to do it that way. Some people like to write it down, the species they got, keep count that way, and then when they get home, they like to enter it this way. So either way is um, okay. Now, when it says plus, that means there's a lot more um, hotspots under there. So I'm just double clicking and here's Sarasota County. And what I'm gonna do is, okay, here's my Yaka Park right here. So if I clicked on this, it, look over here, it says Mayaka River Deep Hole. That's what that hotspot is. If I click on this one, it says Mayaka River South Entrance Pond. If I click on this one, oops, Mayaka River State Park. Okay, that would be a nice one. But let's say we want to put down a name. I mean, this is an easy, much easier way than trying to find it on this map. Enter the place, Celery Fields. But maybe it's a personal a location, like your home or something. Then you would find it and click on that area. But look, it still says Mayaka River State Park. So you've got to click the hotspot. These are personal locations for people. So like this one says, celery fields feeders, okay? You can use that if you want. 
Somebody created one that was a GPS or something, 82.4, yep. This one's center road. I think that's mine, I created that. But let's say we just wanna use the hotspots. Use the hotspots whenever possible because when you bring up a hotspot to look to see what birds were in that hotspot, yours will be in there. If you put in a personal location, they're not going to be entered into the hotspot. Okay, so now this is the page we're on submit and now we're in date and effort. These red stars, you have to enter this data. So we've got to put down the date. I'm just gonna say I did this on March 2nd. Okay, now, were you traveling? If you were, you can click it there and then look what it brings up, more red stars. You need to put in a time, a duration, your hours, your distance, et cetera. But if you put in a stationary, you, you stayed in one spot like the big set, you do that. Then it doesn't ask you to put in distance, okay? Historical, we're gonna go through that later. Incidental, that would be if you see um, like a short-tailed hawk when you're driving, <laughs> then you would put that. But look, you don't have to do anything else with it. No red stars. Okay, traveling. Let's say we started at eight. And now this is one I always forget, AM or PM. Duration, we're gonna say one hour, zero minutes. Distance, I'm gonna say one mile. Party size, oh, there was two of us. And then comments, you can put in, I'm gonna say um, we birded South Berms off Raymond Road. That just gives people a general idea. You don't have to do that though. Now it comes up with your checklist. Okay, so now you go through here and you put down the number of birds that you saw for that species to the best of your ability. Please do not enter X. That is no good for anyone. It's especially no good for a scientist. They have no idea what an X is. An X could be one bird or it could be a thousand birds. So the only time you do X is when you're entering historical data. So let's say we saw six of those. If you see a group of them flying over, Try to count them in fives or tens. You'll get really good at it. Then um, just go through here. And if you don't know if it's a model, they have, look what they have. They have mallard and a modeled hybrid. So let's see what else we got. We got a white-winged dove, I'll say two. As soon as you enter the number, it comes up with add details. So let's see, I'm gonna add some details. Um, I'm gonna say, um, found on the curve at Raymond Road. That's a, a likely spot where a lot of people see them. Now, these details will come up in this person's checklist. When you go into Explore Sarasota County and you look at all the birds, the details and you click on someone's checklist, you're gonna see the details. And that's great because a lot of people put exactly where they saw it or they say heard only. And um, I just, you know, a few years ago, I've just learned about that. And it was um, a lot more fun to try and find the birds that way. Um, also age and sex, you don't have to do this, but sometimes it's nice to know if it was, if they were males or females. Well, on a white winged dove, you're not gonna know the difference between a male and female, unless of course they're copulating. Then you put here, you saw two adults. Is that what we put? Yep, two adults. You can also put um, the breeding code if you want. See, they used to do, they do breeding surveys. So this might take the place of all these breeding surveys they're doing. And you do it at the highest um, level. So I saw them sitting on a nest. Occup occupied nest, okay? There we go. So this is higher, a nest with eggs is higher than an occupied nest. Okay, so we can do that. And then we just move on and we say we had uh, four limpkins, a couple of sand hills. And then you can go over here and type the species name in 
and try and find it that way too. Let's say we had a bronzed cowbird. Okay, now what it's doing, it says no matches. So you're gonna say add species. And then I'm gonna say brown cowbird. Okay, it's saying no species found because you're trying to add bronze cowbird to the celery fields list up here at this time. And that their eBird is saying is um, not common, rare. Now they have all these um, different bronzed cowbirds. Oh, no, they don't. Bronze cowbird, brown headed cowbird, shiny cowbird, brown, da da da. Okay, bronze. Sometimes I'll list a lot of subspecies. Just take the first one. Okay, bronze cowbird. Now here you want to put in, it's rare, so you have to put in something about it. Otherwise, a reviewer is not going to confirm this bird. You need to add text describing the bird, its habitat, and behavior. Don't put in there because uh, Margie Haas told me it was a bronze cowbird. That's not describing it or its habitat. So I'm gonna say um, found on South Berm had a red eye and was a black cowbird. Okay. And then a lot of people do this, photos to be attached. Okay. Then you need to put in here, it's red, complete. Even though that bird has been found there quite a bit, it's still considered rare. They haven't taken it off. So you have to fill all of this information out. Okay. Then let's see, have I done everything? Okay, now I'm gonna say, yes, I'm com I have a complete checklist and I'm submitting it. Okay, now it comes up with, this is your checklist for the celery fields, Sarasota County, this person. Do you wanna share this checklist? Yeah, let's say I'm gonna share the checklist. These are all my contacts that I've entered over the years. I'm gonna share it with Cindy. Okay, that's her um, eBird username. And this is what I always forget to do. You have to complete this transaction by saying share checklist down there. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to here. I've only recorded five because it's an example. And this is the white wing, it gave me all this details I put in, the limp in the sand hill, and here's the bronze culvert. Now you look over here and it says, do you wanna add media? Do you want to edit the species? Do you want to remove any of them? I'm going to say I'm going to add media. Okay, now it comes up with my checklist. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add media. But first, let's just look at this, what it says. Over here on the right-hand side, it says you can upload up to 10 files per species. They, they really prefer JPEGs, ping or GIF are not. Oh no, I guess they, they take those, but JPEG is preferred. The maximum file size is 10 megabytes. Okay, so if it doesn't come in, it's probably because it's one of those two. They like high resolution and they don't want a watermark, okay? A lot of people use the photos for other programs, but it have, it'll have your copyright name on it. But um, so that's why they know you don't want it used for science if it's got your watermark on it. They probably wouldn't use it. Okay, so I'm going to say add media for bronze cowbird. Then what it does, it goes to the last um, file that I had open and I've got it right here. I just, you bring up your photo. You can slide it in too, I guess. And there it is. I'm opening it. And it's going to bring it up. Here it is. That little green is flashing. Now it's done loading and now I can bring it up. 
it seems like it takes a lot, but it really is not bad once you get the swing of it. Here's the bird. Now you can rate it. It's pretty good. It's like a four or five, I would say. So we'll give it a four. And then you can tell a little bit about it if you want. I know it's a male because that eye is really um, bright red and it's got a little bit of blue on the wing. So I'm gonna put one. And then if there's any additional species in the photo, you would put it here. Um, what was it doing? It was eating, foraging. It was doing that before it sat there. And then it, it's, it's in its own habitat and it's done. Okay. Oops. Now, okay, that's it for that. I'm going to go back. Oh, did I say done? Yeah, I think I, I did. Oh, here, saved, done. Okay. Then it goes back to your checklist, the one I was working on with five species. And one more thing before we're done, checklist tools. You click on that. You can edit your location, edit your date, edit your species. So you can add more, subtract, manage your media, put in more photos, share with others. Um, not going to go over that. Hide from eBird. Now that's really nice if you go to look at species in a private area, someone's backyard, and they don't want it on eBird. You can just hide this list from eBird. Um, observers. So it would not come up when people didn't explore on Sarasota County. It would not come up. You can download your list, which is really nice, or you can email it to yourself, or you can print it or delete it. Now, um, a lot of us, us are um, bird naturalists for celery fields, and we need to, um, after we complete our duty, we need to email the rest of the bird naturalists our checklist. So here's an easy way of doing it. You just email it to yourself. Um, also, I had someone come up to me and ask me, they wanted to share their checklist with a friend of theirs in New York or something. They went in here and tried to do a share. Share only works for the people that birded with you for these observations. You can't share it with someone in New York that did not bird with you. What you would do is download it or email it to yourself and then forward it to them. Okay, so now I'm gonna delete it. Yes, I wanna delete that. Okay, are we doing good? Oh, okay, okay, just a few more. And then this is all my checklist that came up. I'm going to go through this uh, next. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. And I'm just going to quickly show you historical. And then we're going to do my eBird, which is really fun. Okay, now look at this photo. I just love this photo. <laughs> it's a striped back bittern. I'm going to look over here at the Macaulay Library. And then I can bring it up. And this is where it was found, down in Chile. Now, for some reason, they didn't have any um, photo, date, photo data, data. So we're going to go back here. There we are. And we're going to do submit and historical. So if you have, um, if you, so I'm down here at country state. So when like I entered my, all of my, um, I had a lot of birds, but I didn't have exact dates and locations of where they were. I just had the country. Then I would go here into, into here. And now you can enter country down here. If you know the city or county, it's better to do that. Um, because they want more of a precise location. But if you don't, for some of those old checklists, you can do country. So I go Panama and I have it right there. And then it comes up. <clears throat> oh, I have to do continue. And then you just go right to continue. If you enter any of these, it's gonna make you put in a location. So just go right to continue. 
And then if you have like, you're gonna enter everything that you saw in Panama and you have a range of dates, that doesn't work. So you have to enter January 1st, um, 1900. <laughs> this is in the help menu, I found it. Okay. Where's 1900? Oh my gosh. Here it is. Okay. Then you're going to say historical. And I don't need to put in any of this, but what you need to put in is um, building life list or something to that. Then it's going to bypass the reviewers and it's just going to allow you to have it on eBird and it probably won't be used. Now look at it, it comes up with all the birds from Panama. Now here's where you can put in an X, okay? You can just keep going right here. It might probably take you five minutes to enter your checklist. X, striped cuckoo, et cetera. Just keep it right on going and submit. Oops, I forgot to say yes, submit. Okay, now I wanna make sure I delete this. Okay, it brings it up so you can look at it. It's historical, it's complete. Checklist tools is where I had delete. So I'm gonna delete that. Yes, yes, okay. All right, <clears throat> now let's get into the fun stuff and then we'll be done here. My eBird. Okay, now after you've entered a lot of checklists, you can bring up, or you can do it anytime. This is the world, and these are the number of species I have seen in this region. Now I could put another region if I wanted to, I could put the United States and it would tell me that. But I'm gonna do that. And then you go down here and it tells you species by country and territory. It's gonna list all the countries that you've birded in and your number of species that you have for those. So, and then it does little um, things to motivate you to bird more. It does your species by year. So at this time in 2021, I have 155 species seen Last year, I had 267, and the year before, I had 304 at this time. Or you, it'll just give you the species for the month. So for the month, I have 109. For the month in 2020, I only had 99, but I really went fast up there. And then for the month, 129. Okay, so I have 692 with photos, 27 with audio. Now let's go down here and I'm going to do, oh, species observed right here. Now you can click on your species observed and now it's taken a little while because it's loading 2000 species. And it's, this is my life list of species for the world. Now I can change that um, right here up at the top. I can change it to the US, I can change it to different years, and I can go and look at a certain species. I'll show you that in a minute. But these are the birds that I have. Now, if I wanna see them in maybe a little bit different format, maybe I wanna see them in taxonomic order. I go over here, I can put them even in alphabetic order. Sometimes I have to look up something and I don't know what taxonomy it's in. I'll do alphabetic. Okay, so if I look down here, here's one more thing with this that's really cool. Let's look for California quail or California, yeah. Okay, it's not a duck, it's not a guan. Here it is, California quail right here. Okay, I have this for an example. This shows you a picture of the California quail. This gives you a, my checklist where I very first time I saw a California quail and where I saw it, Big Morongo, California. Now look at this key over here, view all. Oh, before I do this, up here at the top, oh geez, what was that number? 
California quail. Number 87, okay. Before I do that, let me show you one thing at the very top. Download, okay. This will print, this will save this life list of mine. And it will be in a, what's called a CSV format. It's just a plain format. That, and you might wanna do that. Save your life list in case something happens, you can load it back in, okay? Now let's go down to this one, 80, where was it, 87? No, that's 50. Here it is, okay. Go down here, view all. It's gonna give me every occurrence of where I've seen a California quail, my checklist, 2014, 2014, 2016, and where, that was California, this one was Anza Borrego, and this one was in New Zealand. So that's pretty neat. Now let's go back. And um, now we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna go back to my eBird. So where I was, was right here, species observed for this region, the world. Okay, now let's go over here and take a look at some of these. We're just gonna do a few of these. Checklists, let's look at how we manage checklists. Now this right here shows you my latest checklist. It's in blue that will take you to the checklist, the location, the county, the state. And then look at over here. This means that I have photos attached to those checklists right here. This means that I have shared that checklist. So if I click on that, it's going to show me who I shared it with. And when I shared it, I put these photos on and they can put their photos on, but it won't, their photos will not come up under my checklist. But if you go and ex to explore and look at our checklist that we, we had for March 21st, it's going to have all of our photos in there. So that's what that does. All of these all the way down here. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my eBird. And I'm going to do locations. Is that where I'm going next? Yes, locations. Now this one can be confusing, but it's not once you understand it. Number of checklists. Okay, these are the locations where I've birded. These, this is celery fields. I have 151 checklists at celery fields. And this now means I shared it or it is a hotspot. That's what those all mean. If they don't have anything like this is my home. I created a, a location for that under, and it doesn't have anything in front of it. I have 19 here. And, oh, you hear my night heron out there? It's barking. Okay, I just went into my per, this um, home. This is my home checklist. And it says right here, home, and it gives a GPS for it. And it says it's a personal location and Look at over here, it says life list. Now I can click on that and it's gonna give me all the birds that I've recorded at um, that personal location of my home, when I got them, what they are, and they go up to, I haven't recorded them all. I mean, yes, I had a painted bunt in here, mm -hmm. 67, okay then you can also download that if you want. So I'm gonna go back to my eBird. Locations. And this one said it was a hotspot right there. So you can look at all your life lists for salary seals and you can even download it if you want. Okay, let's go back. Um, I wanted to show you was 
Um, oh, suggested as a hotspot. So let's say I have Center Road. Okay, Celery Field, Center Road. See, it's not a hotspot because it doesn't have one of these caricatures in front. So I'm going to click on Celery Field, Center Road. And right here, I can suggest it as a hotspot right there. Now, I can't do any of these. Oh, yes, I can because it's a personal location. I can merge it right here. I can press merge and it's going to merge. You have to read every one of these when it when you're doing a merge. It's going to merge 22 checklists with a location on the map, okay? So I want it to merge. This is where it, where it's at right here, Center Road, and I want it to merge with Celery Fields. So even if I click on these, they'll change. Do I want to merge it with the Fruitville Library? No. Do I want to merge it with the Alligator Pond? No, I don't even know where that is. Celery Fields, okay. Then when I click Merge, it's going to take all of those and get rid of that Center Road personal location and delete it after merging. You don't have to delete it if you don't want to. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. That's that. And you can just go down, rename them. And because once you first, when you first start out, you have a lot of personal locations because you, but try to use hotspots. It's, it's gonna make your job easier. Okay, so let's go back to my eBird. And now we're gonna go down to alerts right here. Alerts, it's gonna bring up your alerts. I have an alert for the ABA, Sarasota Needs, Rare Bird Alerts, and Sarasota Rare Bird Alerts. Let's say I want to um, get a e -bird, Rare Bird Alert for Minnesota. I just type it in, Minnesota. If you're traveling, maybe you want alerts. Okay, subscribe. Now it should put me, there it is, it put me right here. And now I'm gonna get all the rare bird alerts from Minnesota, unsubscribe. So the way I got that is I just went down here and typed it in under rare bird alerts. Now what's kind of neat about this also is you can find out if you click in here, rare birds for Florida, you can find out what's been on the last seven days, what's been confirmed and what is still waiting to be confirmed. They're, they're, they're being confirmed by a reviewer. Every region, um, county um, has a reviewer and these people are volunteers and they're usually just excellent birders. And so please don't make their job hard. So um, let's see, There's, let's find one by arguing with them. That's what some people do. Okay, so here's, some unconfirmed ones. I got those are all modeled for some reason. Those are unconfirmed. I'm not sure why. Let me look down here. I know there's a better one. Here we go. Long tailed duck. Okay, they saw that today. Um, it's unconfirmed still. And if you look under details here, it's this person said, and remember, you put that in when you're submitting your species and you enter things about it. That was when I was doing the bronze cowbird. I put it had a red eye. This is where it's going to be seen. This person said um, it was in the sound. It was larger than a buffalo head. It had dark wings and a white body. They will add photos, but they didn't because otherwise the photos would appear. Like this person, see that they have a little picture of a camera. So their photos will appear. Now, here's what happens. You get this exclamation point which means it's not confirmed. So that photo will never go in the Macaulay Library until it is confirmed by the reviewer. Okay. Now let's go back to my eBird. And <clears throat> the other thing that you can do is what happened to it? Download my data. Okay. This is another 
um, once you get started and you have a lot of data, instead of just um, saving your life list, which we did, you can also download all your data. So it would uh, download every occurrence of every sighting and every checklist that you had. So then if there was, you could always reload it back onto eBird if there was a problem. This is your profile. This is my profile. Okay, what I like about it, uh oh, it's 8.05. Okay, I'm, I'm done in five minutes. This tells you how many species you've had in all over the world. You just go on it like this and you can change the world to a, um, a different region. Okay, I think it's too late to continue. I mean, I'm, I'm done, pretty much done. So just use your help key. And I also do a class in the winter on eBird next um, winter, I'll be doing one. Okay, Margie, can you hear me? I can. Okay. So, okay, so we have two, we have two um, questions from William Meese. Um, he said, are the 20, uh, 222 species for Siesta Key Public Beach since eBird started? It's everyone that put in a yes, it, but it doesn't always include historical data. So it's checklists of, of when eBird started, or it could be if someone entered a really good checklist from many, many years ago. And it was, uh, they knew the location, they knew the time, they knew the date and effort, then I don't see why it wouldn't be included. Correct. He also asks, historically, I've been, he says, I've birded a lot at Point, Point Pele National Park in Ontario. I don't have the exact points at Point Pele, but I have the date of observation. What's the best way to proceed? If you have the date of observation, that's great. And what doesn't he have? The exact points on Point Pele, Pele. That's okay. Point Pele, I'm sure, is a hot spot. So go in and look for what's what it's in. Uh, it's in oh, Ontario. Toronto? Ontario. What? Ontario. Okay, so you'd go to Ontario, explore Ontario, and then you'd go to the right side of Explore, all the way down to Hot Spots bring up all the hotspots and Point Pelee is probably number one. Go in there and um, what did he want to do? It, it seems to me also, Catherine, don't you think that if oh, it's- when, historical... when he submits, when he submits his checklist, that's when he puts in, um, he puts in the Ontario and then it brings up that map and that's right. when he clicks on the hotspot, Point Pelee and he'll see right. it. So go under submit. And if he doesn't have exact points, you don't, then he you could don't just even, put the cursor somewhere in, on Point Pele, right? And just put his data in. Is right, that but, you, but I'm encouraging everyone to use the hotspots. Right, it, but within, I think his question is, he said he birded a lot in this national park, Point Pele in Ontario, but he doesn't have exact points. In that case, what would you suggest? I would suggest using the hotspot for Point Pele. Oh, okay. All right, I see what just you're like you're using the hotspots. You went all over celery fields. You don't you have to put in exact spots. Just use the hotspots, celery fields. Okay. And he has a third question. At a former home in Ellington, we would observe about 40 black-bellied whistling ducks daily. At my present home, I started to observe the same ducks, but I was doubted by the reviewer what to do. Well. <laughs> well, that's why you want to describe what you saw and if possible have a photograph. But you, if you describe it and describe it really well, um, usually the reviewer will accept it. But there might be a reason why they're not accepting it. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I... You can ask the reviewer is going to email you. They email you and you can ask them. Just be really nice to them because they, they're volunteers and they put in so many hours to review everybody. And there's a lot of people that are always arguing with them that I feel sorry for them. The <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I think that's it for questions. Um, okay. 
I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't think it's either good or bad. I think you've been extremely thorough for one thing. Um, well, I, you know, it gets you started knowing, knowing what's out there and then you can take the class or you can just start playing around. I, I thank you so much for this. It's, it's um, all these little hidden nooks and crannies of eBird. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And, and, and wait a minute, there's one more. Oh, um, you're getting some comments um, in the chat from Linda Fields. I'm sorry, I just lost the cursor here. Um, from Linda Fields to uh, you, Catherine, what an exceptional presentation. Your enthusiasm is infectious. <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What a great note to close on. <laughs> it certainly <laughs> is. All right. So, All right. Do you want to stop sharing your screen? Oh, Catherine? thank you. Um, that way they can see Marty oh, who's going to okay. tell us what's next, unless you want me to tell them what's next. Well, um, on uh, April 12th, it is, right? Karen, I don't have yes. a April 12th. Is, is a friend of mine, um, Melissa Abdo, who is the um, South Florida head of of um, uh, really head of the South Florida region for the National Parks Association. And she's going to talk to us about Big Cypress, which as most of you may know is, is really right next to the Everglades National Park. And Melissa is a native of Miami and a PhD botanist and knows this whole uh, Southern region of South Florida intimately, as well as having spent a lot of time in very exotic places in Indonesia where she actually worked, she wasn't visiting. So um, you can expect her to give us a very interesting and thorough presentation of what's going on in Big Cyprus. And we all need to focus positively that they stop violating all the environmental codes there and plow it up, which they're digging up 300 year old trees, all that. So. I know Melissa will cover that, and um, uh, she's a, a gifted presenter, presenter, and I think we'll all really enjoy what she has to say. So I hope you'll join us on April 12th, Great. which is our Monday, second Monday of the month presentation. Our general meeting. And then the Audubon Extra in a month will be on Blakiston's Fish Owl with um, oh, good. the author, yes, Jonathan, Jonathan Slot. Slot. Yep. So um, some great stuff coming up. Hope to see you there.